Uh, tell us, what do you do at VMware? I lead the uh, upstream contributions to Kubernetes for the VMware Cloud Native Business Unit. Are you involved with, like, across VMware or certain areas? So, well, within the Cloud Native Business Unit, we have a couple of products that, mm -hmm. that our, our customers embrace to, to leverage Kubernetes, uh, VKE and PKS. And so fundamental to those two products is Kubernetes. Uh, so my team really focuses on the Kubernetes ecosystem, and, and we contribute in, in ways that help our users kind of create a, a better environment uh, so they can run their applications on top of Kubernetes. Different people have different definitions of Plaudity. What is the definition of Plaudity according to you? Yeah, I think it has to do with dynamically managing applications. Right? Because we were in a, a period before where it was all about deploying infrastructure, deploying storage, networking, and co compute. And there may have different, been different teams doing that. And it was probably some form of DevOps, right? where they glued all that stuff together in a highly automated way. And so when I think of cloud native, it's really taking advantage of what the clouds have to offer, all of the elasticity of the resources, but also thinking about the failures that clouds produce. And so what we end up with is a piece of software like Kubernetes uh, that helps us run these applications built for cloud. Now let's go back to the open source or upstream angle. Uh, how important is open source for VMware? Very important. Uh, I think that what we're finding in open source is we have a, it's a, we have a vibrant community and lots of companies and lots of people and lots of community members and users are all coming together uh, to innovate. And that's, that's you know, taking a lot of the knowledge that we had at individual companies, you know, contributing it together in this global pool of knowledge and creating better software at the end of the day. Uh, so Kubernetes is one of those projects where open source, I think, is thriving in terms of helping it you know, grow and get the velocity that we're seeing today. You have also productized Kubernetes. How does this contribution to upstream works versus what your customer demand or what your own use case may be? How do mm -hmm. you balance it? We think about it somewhat separately, right? We want to contribute to Kubernetes to, to make it a very successful, healthy project. And that's where my team focuses. Uh, we figure out what the strategies are for Kubernetes and sometimes where they align to what VMware strategies are for our customers. Uh, and we focus on those areas to help the project grow and be more sustainable. And one of those key things that we're looking at today is extensibility. Because mm -hmm. uh, for Kubernetes, they want to make sure that they can grow and focus on the core pieces that help it be a successful app platform. Uh, and that means that you know, as you want to add extensibility or add hooks to be successful on top of different cloud platforms, those all need to be extensible components versus built into the actual project. So we're focusing a lot on helping Kubernetes be a very mature project from an extensibility perspective. That's one of the key areas that we're involved in. Today's keynote, Pat said you know, that VMware is the dial tone for Kubernetes. What does that mean? Well, I think that Kubernetes is the dial tone for applications. Right, first of all, and that just means that Kubernetes should be on every cloud. It should be a place that you can deploy an app and have a consistent experience. And you know, VMware can be the, the dial tone for uh, Kubernetes. And that means that you know, if you're thinking about running Kubernetes on-prem in a hybrid data center in a multi-cloud world, you know, our platforms will be perfect for Kubernetes. And we'll focus on figuring out how, how to expose as many features as possible to really enable the Kubernetes platform. Because to have a successful Kubernetes platform, you need a very full, full feature cloud below it. And so we're focused on making sure we have all those features available and rolling them up and making them available to the users wherever they want to run Kubernetes. So you recently donated a project to, to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Yep. Uh, can you tell us about that? Where did yeah, we're very excited about that. And, and I think this shows our commitment to the open source community. It shows our commitment to the foundation. Uh, Harbor is a uh, open source container registry. And this is one key component of cloud native environments. You've got to figure out where you're going to store your container images. And you know, in a multi-cloud world, you want to make sure that you have consistent experience across all the different clouds that you're going to go to. So being able to run your own container registry for these environments uh, is really an, an essential component there. Uh, so Harbor Harbor is a project that we donated recently, uh, and it represents like a enabling you know moment for customers so that they can actually confidently run across multi-cloud and have a consistent image registry experience. And VMware has a you know huge portfolio of open source projects. Will you be donating more in future? Yeah, we'd love to, uh, and we're going to identify opportunities you know as time goes by that you know, if there's an opportunity in the ecosystem and, and other companies want to collaborate with us, users in the community want to collaborate with us, then we'll be creating you know, other open source projects to help fill those gaps. Uh, and then we'd love to contribute that technology uh, so that we can create these bigger, you know, this bigger cloud native environment. And how, how do you kind of decide that, okay, this is a project we should donate versus maintain ourselves? Is it because of the 
either the interest from the, you can just dump a project and you will be the only core you know, maintainer of the project. That is not a true open source project. So mm -hmm. how do you decide, okay, this is the project we should donate or we should just keep it internally as an open source project? Listening to the community. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll create projects, we'll open source them and you know, we'll, we'll talk to the community about it. Uh, we'd love to have other companies that, that are in the same field want to collaborate with us and, and really further uh, and innovate together on projects. And so it just has to do with the technology and what the community is asking us for. And, and what kind of internal process you have within VMware to, to either encourage developers to either co contribute to open source projects mm -hmm. or to freely use them? Uh, and I think Dirk's going to be on next, and Dirk is an expert in what we're doing within open source and fostering open source okay. technology. Uh, fr from our perspective within Kubernetes, we've got a lot of internal meetings that we have where we, we have a lot of different you know, folks within the, um, the organization that participate in the SIGs, and weekly we'll talk about what's going on among the different SIGs, and we'll figure out you know, where we need to you know, help out and where there's opportunity to apply some engineers and, and contribute. Uh, so it has to do with just you know, generally talking internally. Right? Like, making sure that everybody's aware of what's going on in the projects, making sure everybody's aware of where the opportunities are and getting everybody on the same page. Awesome. Uh, before we wrap up, you know, this is the question I ask everybody. When you're not open sourcing stuff and work with upstream, what do you do in your free time? My family. <laughs> I've got a couple of young kids and I spend time with them as much as I can outside of uh, work. So whether it's the kids' sports or taking them to play golf or anything that we can do together. That's where my time is focused. Have you seen Infinity Wars yet? Yes, many times. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you think about Avengers Force? What is going to happen to Thanos? <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to ask my son and I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs>